Salam, Vaher Vachlan is here. My name is Farzin Farzad. I'm an ethnic Azerbaijani from Iran and I've spent the majority of my adult life promoting the arts, culture, history, and heritage of Azerbaijan and the Azerbaijani people. My work brings me here to Washington, D.C. to show how the perceptions of Azerbaijan have changed in the minds of Americans. Azerbaijan declared its independence from the USSR in 1991 and established diplomatic relations with the United States in the spring of the following year. Since then, relations between the United States and Azerbaijan have developed tremendously. The 20th anniversary of U.S.-Azerbaijan diplomatic relations was marked by a high-level conference in Washington, D.C. in April 2012. The conference was sponsored by the State Oil Company of the Azerbaijan Republic, or SOCAR, with organizational support from the Turquoise Council, U.S. Azeris Network, Houston Baku Sister Cities, and other diaspora organizations. It was attended by about 40 U.S. representatives and senators, as well as members of parliament and ministers from the Azerbaijan Republic. Well, of course, the United States has a tremendous sense of gratitude for Azerbaijan's support in past efforts. But going forward, energy security is going to be critical to world security, and Azerbaijan is going to play a key role in that energy security. The strategic partnership between Azerbaijan and the United States is almost difficult for me to overstate. We've been pre close friends for, for 20 years now, and we're also very impressed with how uh, Azerbaijan is able to develop many of their own resources, the, the workforce there, the, the uh, highly skilled uh, people there that uh, um, are in your energy sector. Very impressive for the United States because that's not common to some of the areas surrounding Azerbaijan. I think they're very important allies to the United States and I think that's why you have so many congressmen and state representatives and politicians from the United States here to meet and to discuss a greater development of that relationship between Azerbaijan and the United States. The partnership between the United States and Azerbaijan is a good thing. It has been good for Azerbaijan, it's been good for the United States, but more, more importantly, it's been good for the world. And we will continue to develop that strong strategic partnership with our two nations uh, because of uh, many mutual interests and concerns. Well, it is a key country, absolutely. When you think and consider the region of the world uh, where Azerbaijan sits, when you think about, you know, uh, Russia and Iran and the United States policy and trying to make sure that we have democracy and, and, and improving relationships, it is absolutely a key country. Uh, and the relationship that we've had over the last 20 years has been very strong. And we, and I think what's good about this conference is we're talking about how we can maintain that strength and even grow it to be even stronger. In recent years, Azerbaijan's economy has risen sharply. The capital city, Baku, has gone through a dramatic transformation, becoming a megalopolis where ancient history meets hypermodernity. This year, Azerbaijan was chosen to host the 2012 Eurovision contest after a stunning victory in last year's competition. Azerbaijan has taken advantage of all the international attention to show to the world the breathtaking achievements it's made thus far. The State Oil Company of the Azerbaijan Republic, or SOCAR, has organized a short visit of American congressmen to Baku in 2012 for the Eurovision competition. In Washington, D.C. at the U.S. Uh, Azerbaijan Conference, we, we discussed the possibility of coming to Eurovision 2012. And I thought it was a great opportunity to come to Baku and to see uh, what I've been reading about and to learn more about the uh, Azerbaijan uh, culture and the, and the economy. SOCAR organized the program for me and other uh, Americans to come here as a way of familiarizing people with Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is known for its energy, but it's a good effort with the Eurovision Song Contest being held here for Azerbaijan to really internationalize itself, familiarize investors with all the opportunities that are here. Sokar actually uh, is doing more than what it is. And Sokar is not just only the, the company, uh, but also the, the voice of Azerbaijan in diaspora, and we do see that way because uh, the, with a big support of the Sokar, uh, there are a lot of events are ongoing, not only in the United States, but also all over the world. The interest of Azerbaijan has played a big part, 
and a partnership with the United States, and especially with 9-11, Azerbaijan was one of the first to step forward with the United States and call us and say, is there anything that we can do and to be a partner with us? And that what caused the interest to come here to learn about Azerbaijan. We were so very fortunate to come with a group, the Turquoise Council from Texas to uh, Azerbaijan, which is a real special opportunity to learn about a part of the world that the Americans uh, know very little about. And we're here to see the Eurovision finals. Unfortunately, many people in the United States still don't know much about Azerbaijan. One of the goals of this trip was to acquaint the American people with the history, the culture, the traditions, and the customs of the Azerbaijani people. One, I couldn't say it, couldn't pronounce it, couldn't spell it. I knew that it had something to do with Russia at some point in time, but frankly, on the map, I really wasn't sure where it was on the map. Americans are exposed to places that they're not as familiar with, and I think when someone asked me if I'd like to go to Azerbaijan, my first question was, where the heck is it? I didn't know where it was. I knew that it was a part of the former Soviet Union, and I knew that there had been contention in the region. I didn't have an understanding of the vital role that Azerbaijan plays in the production of oil. Uh, that's a, a, a huge eye-opener. Of course, that's a tremendous reality about this nation and about its future and about its past. It was very valuable to the Soviet Union, who took oil from here for 10 cents a barrel for decades, for almost a century. Well, I have to say that before being invited to come, I, of course, have heard of Azerbaijan, but I could not have told you the capital was Baku. Well, this trip has opened my eyes and, opened my pers and, and broadened my perspective immensely. Um, I knew very little about it, and uh, this is I was part of the reason that we wanted to come, so we could learn a lot about um, this culture. Much more than I thought I would see from a what I envisioned to be a Cold War Russian gray town, and it, it's nothing like that. It's really beautiful. One of the most interesting things that I was reading about was that apparently a hundred or so years ago, Azerbaijan actually uh, provided more than half of the world's oil, and I had no idea about that. That was very impressive to me. I'm very uh, glad I came because I didn't did not know anything about Azerbaijan. This was my first time hearing about it, but uh, after being here, I'm very impressed with, with this country and with this, uh, this city. I think the more we as uh, either local government officials or federal government officials interact, the more we understand each other. And I think through understanding and through the growing of respect for each other, uh, it affects our policies. And uh, Azerbaijan has been a friend to the U.S. in many different ways. And uh, I should, we should respect that friendship and honor it. What can the United States do to help with the border of Karabakh? and the uh, uh, Russians back in Armenia in that occupation. Please, if you are going to help us defend your values, we are looking for support for objective position of Azerbaijan concerning not Azerbaijani desire, but concerning international law. Be on the same side of international law and you will help Azerbaijan to restore the territorial integrity. Thank you very much. I think relationships between the United States and Azerbaijan are probably pretty good on the uh, government side, but as far as culturally, the people, um, just Americans understanding where Azerbaijan is, the people of Azerbaijan, the history, um, I think we have to do a much better job of uh, letting Americans know this is just such a beautiful country.
The organizers made sure that the visitors from the United States had a complete and fulfilling experience in Azerbaijan. Their schedule included, but was not limited to, meetings with business professionals, visits to state institutions, and sightseeing tours of museums and ancient historical sites. Today we had a fascinating time at the University of Foreign Languages and met people who were elected to the parliament, but also lead that institution, and spoke with the second in command at the um, U.S. Embassy, who had a good depth of knowledge about this nation and about the relations between our two nations. Secretary Clinton is coming back here next week on June 6th. We just announced it uh, yesterday. Um, this will be the second time in the less than two years that I have been in Baku that she is coming. Now, that's extraordinary uh, for a country of only 9 million people. Um, before Secretary Clinton's first visit on July 4th of 2010, there had not been a U.S. Secretary of State here since Secretary Baker came in the early 90s. This university opened in 1948 with three languages, English, French, and German. But after gaining an independence, this university started to prepare high-qualified specialists in languages, and not only English, French, and German. Today we have 15 languages. Azerbaijan is famous for its hospitality and its versatile culinary traditions. When you visit the country, be prepared for extravagant feasts that include a lot of food and many, many toasts. I'm particularly impressed with the, um, with the hospitality. Uh, in Mississippi, uh, we call Mississippi the hospitality state. Uh, Azerbaijan would have to be considered the hospitality country. Last night we had a reception and it was to spend more time with each other and to see the culture and the dances that we saw last night, which were incredible. We were able to participate in the dances and learn some of the dances, um, which was great. I mean, and that's part of, of sharing and creating relationships. It, it was fantastic. <laughs> Really enjoying our trip here uh, in Abidjan and uh, look forward to coming back. Amazed at the people, uh, the culture, the hospitality has been shown to us so far. And uh, I know that with all the construction going on, uh, that this is going to be a destination to come to. We are staying right here in this hotel and uh, so it is the most opulent, wonderful hotel I've ever, you know, it, it class uh, beyond anything I've ever experienced. It is top notch. We wake up at five, see the sunrise, the gym opens at six, so we work out for an hour and then take a yoga class, uh, which is all part of, you know, being here in the hotel. Uh, very good, great place.
that's a magnificent place. It will be, you know, when we walked in, we thought we were, I don't know, it was just unusual for me. So it was a great experience. It's a beautiful piece of property. So I toured the property yesterday. I did the beach late at night so I could see it. I'm having an awesome time in your country. I wonder how visitors compare Azerbaijan to other countries in the region. Uh, Sherry and I have traveled two times to Turkey. We've also been in uh, uh, Dubai and also Oman, which is more Arabian Peninsula. Well, Oman is no comparison. Dubai has similar economics in that it was a really old country that suddenly found a lot of money from oil and now they're building enormous buildings. In that way, Azerbaijan is similar to uh, Dubai or Qatar. Uh, old country, but new wealth. We say new money. Uh, however, in terms of culture, food, architecture, uh, many things, uh, Azerbaijan is very similar from my viewpoint to Turkey. I did not expect Azerbaijan to be so Western in appearance. We saw a lot of development. Some of it's new, some of it's not as new, but the country is much more European looking than I had anticipated not having visited this region before. To me, it seems an interesting mix, though, of Russian and Turkish. I have been to Turkey two times, and so it's kind of an interesting mix of those two cultures. Um, I especially notice it in the food, and uh, also language, um, and some of the artwork seems to be an interesting mix. But I think Azerbaijan is its own place, and I think the people here will make their country what it's supposed to be for them, not Turkish or Russian or anybody else, but, but just for them. What I expect to get from the trip is the um, culture of Azerbaijan, um, the history, getting to know the people, of course, as part of the culture. I am having a great time. It's a great learning experience just to see another culture, experience another culture. I've been pleasantly, pleasantly surprised uh, with Azerbaijan and its people and its uh, history. Azerbaijan is proud of its rich cultural heritage. Azerbaijani carpets are world-renowned and are included in UNESCO's list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. As a child growing up, I grew up in a house that looked like a museum from Baghdad with, uh, we call them Turkish carpet, but carpets from the Middle East. And when we were in the carpet museum just today, uh, here in Baku, I saw several of the carpets that looked similar to the ones that were in my mother and father's home in Kansas City. So maybe it's destiny that brought me to Baku because as a young boy, I grew up playing on carpets and maybe one of those carpets came from Azerbaijan. Who knows, but I will try and find out if that's true. We have more than 90 types of this Buddha. This is very interesting. Uh, this is my first time to observe an actual uh, place that, that creates the carpets. And I can see how these people are doing their job very well and creating some beautiful pieces of art, uh, not necessarily just carpets, but to me, this is art. Learning and becoming friends with people, I'm taking back a piece in my heart, people of Azerbaijan, as well as the, the carpet. I think it's hard work, you know, because my mom worked in a factory for years also, so I understand the industry, but it is quality work. It would take me a long time to learn how to do it well, you know, I tried it, and I'm not too sure that is going to be a quality carpet, the one that I did. 
but I appreciate the hard work that goes into making this carpet. Whenever I buy a piece of carpet, I will want to know how it was made, you know, because now I understand the good ones and the quality ones. Handmade for a month, that is a long time to get a good carpet done. The contribution of Azerbaijani composers to world musical culture cannot be overstated. For example, the first opera of the Muslim world was written by Uzair Hajibayov and first performed in Baku in 1908. And in 2008, UNESCO declared Mughal, an Azerbaijani folk art, to be a masterpiece of the oral heritage of humanity. We're here tonight at the State Ballet of Azerbaijan and we're seeing A Thousand One Nights. It's such a beautiful presentation. The sets are so vibrant and the colors are so bright. Um, just the set alone seems to come alive. I serve on the board of a modern dance company in Kansas, which is similar to ballet. Uh, this could perhaps be called a form of modern dance even and uh, I can't wait to tell my colleagues back in Kansas about this performance because they're going to be very, very jealous that they weren't here. <laughs> It is magnificent. It rates at the very top of uh, any ballets anywhere in the world. Uh, this is a very beautiful concert hall. Uh, I'm amazed at the, the history of Azerbaijan and the magnificent beauty and the architecture. The music is just exceptional, uh, just amazing. I, I've gone to the ballet in many of the great cities around the world and this is uh, clearly right there in the top three or four. It's a beautiful country, um, the culture, the customs, uh, the history, a rich history. Uh, I believe that if you don't study history, you're doomed to repeat it, but nevertheless, uh, just to walk through this uh, museum and see the, the artifacts and all of the uh, things that the archaeologists have uncovered is remarkable. And, you know, in my country where I live, uh, in Arkansas, we maybe have a, a 300 year written history of our, uh, where we live. And to consider the fact there's five or 6,000 years of history here just uh, is unbelievable. Now you look at the, the place that we traveled in Gubistan today, uh, you know, tens of thousands of years old. Uh, and this is the crossroads between uh, all civilizations. And so it's been an absolutely wonderful experience to see that. Despite its young age, Azerbaijan has had many tangible achievements in various areas. An American guest, noting these accomplishments, claimed that the U.S. can learn a lot from Azerbaijan. They had an opportunity to reach out and do some uh, dialogue and to, and to help the, uh, Azerbaijan replicate some of the things that they want to replicate that we're doing in the United States. And of course, there are things we can learn from, from this culture in the United States. Seeing the opportunity for business and growth and exchange of goods and services from America and goods and services that are produced here. And also some of the artisans uh, from this country, I've seen some of the uh, architects, some of the stonework. If we can get that in America and exchange those type of things, even on that level, would be great. Just the workmanship, 
would be fantastic. I was back in 2003 for the first time since 99, and I saw a little bit of change. Then I was back in 2010, and I saw tremendous change. So it's very impressive to see what can be done in a period of 10 years in developing a country. You know, I had no concept of how, this, how it was going to be. I love it. It's beautiful, the people, the culture, and what they have done with the resources. You know, here in New Mexico, we are very rich in oil and gas. And we have not done in the state of New Mexico what Azure for Jean has done here. I have a company that does project management. I work a lot with schools on environmental education projects. And one of the things I'm interested in about being in Azerbaijan is what schools here are doing to learn about the environment and uh, what uh, the government and companies here are doing to teach the general public about the environment as well. And I've been noticing here in the old city, especially all of the recycling bins uh, for paper and plastic, but also for food waste which is very progressive and a very good thing. And so I'm quite impressed by that. What's a trip to the Near East without doing a little bit of shopping? When you come to Azerbaijan, be sure to get acquainted with the time-honored tradition of bargaining, dating all the way back to the time of the Silk Route, which passed through Azerbaijan. Bargaining is a way of life for Azerbaijani merchants, so please don't insult them by agreeing to the initial price. I like shopping very much. You, you took some shots of my purchases. Um, I like to have things to take my family from where we visit, and um, uh, the quality of the merchandise was very good. I think it's one of the important things that we can do as travelers when we go to another country is help support their economy. And we've been treated with such hospitality here that uh, I'm eager to go into some of the shops, meet some of the shopkeepers, and uh, I plan to spend some money with them and uh, hopefully help the economy, help their shop, help their family, and be able to take back some very unique uh, craft work to our friends and family and for our own home in the United States. Twenty years of having a democracy, uh, you've done a very good job. I mean, you uh, uh, have done far better than we did in America just twenty years into being a democracy. I think a democracy, in many ways, is an evolving system of government anywhere in the world. In my country, as an example, 20 years in our democracy, women couldn't vote, uh, blacks couldn't vote. Uh, over time, there was a process, and people were encouraging more freedom. It is uh, a startling revelation to me how, uh, how advanced uh, this uh, part of the world is, how uh, culturally and economically uh, fascinating and vibrant it is, uh, and that uh, we share a lot of uh, commonalities, I think, in terms of the uh, individual freedoms and the desire to uh, you know, live in a self-determined way, uh, but uh, without the kind of ethnic and uh, religious strife that I've seen in, in other parts of this region the attitude of the people, it's a can-do attitude. And, and you can just, you can feel it. You can also feel the pride. Look how clean and beautiful the city is. There's not a piece of paper on the ground. You don't see the tagging, the writing on the walls. You, you see a pride and, you know, I think that's something that you all should, should be, feel so very good about. And the pride of their country, you feel it. You feel the pride of who they are. You feel the pride of sharing with us what they have, what they've accomplished. One of your first impressions of Azerbaijan will be the incredible friendliness of its people. Upon your visit to Baku, you'll immediately see how safe and secure the country is and how people stroll about the city at all hours of the night. This is one of the strongest characteristics of the Azerbaijani people. I, I ride a bicycle uh, in every city I go to uh, in the world. 
Well, I can get the sense of uh, that people feel that freedom here. Very much a, a sense of openness. I mean, how many places in the world could a 58-year-old man on a bicycle with a helmet with a biking jersey and spandex pants uh, just roll along the uh, boulevard on a crowded holiday and people were so friendly to me. Well, you see couples holding hands. Yeah. Uh, people are here with children. Last night, uh, we met some friends for dinner on the boulevard and uh, saw the lights come on in the city, uh, the flame towers lighting up, uh, the fountains in the bay lighting up, um, the lights over the Crystal Palace. Uh, that I'm from Kansas, so uh, it kind of looks like a tornado at certain points in the lighting over the Crystal Palace. And uh, so we love the old city, but we also love the new uh, Azerbaijan. And uh, we're finding it a very interesting mix. There's two things that impress me the most here. One is the people are so friendly and the city is so clean and the um, amount of investment in architecture and the arts and your uh, love for people who have fought for the independence for your country, it's, it's just very heartwarming. There are a lot of countries that have oil and gas and diamonds and resources that never develop into a, a, a desirable place to live, never develop a quality of life that people want to go there and visit uh, because culture is the key. Of course, you need the money, you need the resources to support, but without the culture, you're not going to have a city that, that's desirable, that people want to live in, that people want to visit, and I think that's what you're having here. And then the architecture, oh my goodness, look behind us, one of the most incredible pieces of architecture. So this country who is, um, is finding itself in a, in a world exposed and you've got so much to show off. So I think you ought to be very, very proud to have us here as visitors. I know we're proud to be here and enjoy this with you. Azerbaijan, what a country. I would encourage anyone who ever has an opportunity who is living in the United States to come to Azerbaijan. It is a wonderful country. It has so much potential. There's so much going on here. Uh, it is uh, very alive and vibrant and, and nothing like I expected. It sounded like a marvelous opportunity. I've never been to this part of the world at all. Uh, very, very impressed and uh, really enjoying ourselves. I think the uh, economic vitality, the place is obviously just uh, extraordinarily uh, economically vibrant. Uh, the booming economy here is something that's particularly startling. So, I've met a number of Azerbaijanis and I actually got the chance to talk to some members of uh, parliament this morning, this afternoon rather. And again, what makes Azerbaijan what it is, is not the structures, but it's the people, the culture that we that I've, I've been able to be introduced to, it's been, I mean, it's awesome. I mean, this is a great place. The Azerbaijani people that I've met so far are extremely friendly. They're well-educated. They're knowledgeable about not only what's going on in their country, but what's going on around the world. They have a, a, a real strong sense of their position in the world and, and, and what, what uh, role they can and should be playing in the world. My wife and I just find it uh, just we're just incredulous that we've had this wonderful opportunity to come to Azerbaijan and, and intermingle with the folks here. Uh, and we're loving it, and uh, it's just uh, exciting beyond belief. We, we've really enjoyed ourselves. Hospitality is encoded in Azerbaijani DNA. To properly host the guests is a matter of honor for every Azerbaijani. People will spend their life savings and even borrow money so that when you visit, they'll have a full table set of delicious food and delicacies. And there's nothing you can do about it. It must simply be taken as a given. The host family and the culture here, uh, hospitality is in their core. That's in their core belief. They don't have to act it, they just give it. They give the warmth, they give the love. Last night we had an opportunity to dine for dinner in the, the home of uh, some very wonderful Azerbaijani people and it was the most gracious, 
welcoming environment um, that I could have we could have asked for. They were so hospitable and uh, just so very gracious and generous with their time, uh, with their food, with their homes, and it was indeed the best part of the trip. I've had the pleasure, the privilege of doing a home visit, having dinner at the home of uh, one of your vice presidents of SOCAR. So I met his family, his wife, children, grandkids. So it's been a tremendous cultural exchange. I've learned a lot about Azerbaijan that I would not have gotten just Googling Azerbaijan up on the internet. It's, it's the best way to, I think, even more learn about who these people are and who are we as to eat with someone in their home. So I myself in America, I've hosted Turks into my home. I've hosted Japanese people into my home and people from other countries to come to my home and, and eat and see how I live. So I'll, I think it's one of the, the best things that we get to do is to go to another man's home and break bread with him. Uh, we had an opportunity to go to dinner last night and it was absolutely a wonderful experience to, to go to a home. They treated us very nicely to be with children. In fact, uh, we're headed out right now. We had such a good time last night that uh, our host family's taking us out again tonight. So we're going out to eat with them again tonight. So we've, we've built a great relationship with them. And the food, you know, the food, very healthy. They eat extremely, uh, very, very healthy. A lot of, lot of herbs. Frankly, I think the food is the best I've ever tasted. And so I give my, my wife a hard time that uh, the Soviets have added a lot to culture and, and, and things, but cuisine is not one of them. Now I'm going to have to change that. Azerbaijan's food is absolutely wonderful. I see the guys. That's why everybody looks skinny. That's what we say. You guys are thin. You know, we, 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 we put on some weight here. You feed us a lot. You know, we were eating a lot of lamb and all these vegetables and the tomatoes are sweet. Everything's been awesome. A beautiful place, beautiful people, you know, um, good treatment, an extremely good treatment. I'm going to inform my friends and tell everybody what we have here and inviting more people for next year and keep the relationship between Azerbaijan, Baku, and U.S. We're going to keep that relationship going on. Being that Azerbaijan is such a young and small country, victory at the Eurovision contest was a huge event. In May 2011, when Al and Nikki won the contest, Azerbaijanis poured into the streets celebrating the victory, despite the fact that it was 3 o'clock in the morning. According to the Eurovision contest rules, the winning country would be allowed to host the contest the following year. Thus, the 2012 Eurovision contest in Baku became an opportunity for Azerbaijan to showcase its achievements to the world. I was very happy to attend the Eurovision contest last night, actually this morning. And it's very inspiring competition because it, uh, it's people from all around Europe and Asia, 26 nations, the best young people, the best musical talent, the best singers, all competing from 26 different nations. Azerbaijan is known for its energy, but it's a good effort with the Eurovision Song Contest being held here for Azerbaijan to really internationalize itself, familiarize investors with all the opportunities that are here. I hope that the Eurovision uh, competition and other major uh, sporting and cultural events will bring more people uh, from the West, from the Far East, from Africa, from other parts of the world into Azerbaijan and develop more relations with your country. I, you know, I was very interested to see what we call regional or neighborhood voting where people from the former Yugoslavia Republic were voting for each other, even though they had war 15 years ago. And even people in Eastern Europe uh, voting together, even though some of those guys are tired of Russia, but they still would vote for the Russian babushkas. So it was very interesting to me that despite that there have been so many wars and animosity and anger in Europe and Asia over the years, that when it comes to art, artistic competition, then they forget about the past and they look at the future and they vote for each other and, and support each other. I was very pleased with what I seen. The only thing, you know, I didn't like the final. I wasn't pleased with the final. I thought, you know, Azerbaijan or uh, Turkey would be the finalists. I like the Azerbaijani singer a lot. I, I also like Macedonia a lot. 
Well, the Eurovision last night was an incredible experience. Um, I lived in Sweden for two years, mm -hmm. uh, and so it was great for me uh, to see the country that I'd lived in for two years win Eurovision. <laughs> Woman, maybe it was Lithuania, the woman who had uh, interesting hair. Okay. And, uh, from and El Albania. 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 She, so, I thought that her voice yeah, her was voice. most <laughs> impressive <laughs> with the voice. range in her voice. voice. I didn't know what she was saying, but I could feel the power in her voice. So if it was a love song, whatever the man did, if he listens to that song, he wouldn't do it again. <laughs> Several years ago, our crew filmed a documentary about Azerbaijan, and in it, we asked people walking the streets of Washington, D.C. what they knew about Azerbaijan. Let's take a look and see what they had to say. What do you know about Azerbaijan? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> do you know what it is? No, sir. I don't. What do you know about Azerbaijan? What do you know about Azerbaijan? Nothing. Do you know what it is? No. You know, I read about it all the time. I, I, I know what it is, and it's just... Um, it's a country? No, no. We hope that events such as these will allow more Americans to have a greater understanding about this small but beautiful country and see all the wonderful things that Azerbaijan has to offer. for our group of American senators and representatives to come is a good way we can go back to our country, tell other Americans about what we saw and what we learned here, and I'm glad I got to come. The country is uh, bustling. Their country is uh, growing very fast. I mean, the, the commerce here is growing very fast, and uh, it has a lot to offer. And it's a very warm and hospitable place to visit, and you should go there. We all come from different states in the United States. And what would happen, the 200 visitors would go back and spread the word about Azerbaijan. And we could talk about the relationships between the two countries. We're going to all be ambassadors for, for Azerbaijan when we go back to our country, to the United States. And then and I think it helps, helps, helps your country for us to come in and to see what's going on and, and to share it back in the United States not very well known around the world, but becoming one of the uh, greatest countries in the world and uh, has a lot of potential for growth. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful country and beautiful people and, uh, and we love it. We love it. Absolutely love it.